We've all been to hell before. Go, go, go! But we've never been in one like this. We're almost completely surrounded. You won't get through here. Get back. Hurry up. In 15 minutes, three enemy BMPs with troops were destroyed. We had to hold our positions as long as possible. In previous episodes, we told you about the special operation of the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade, which needed to break into Avdivka to create a corridor for the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from there to new positions. In this video, you will see the continuation. One of the commanders of the assault team will comment on these tough battles. And also, you will find the answer why Ukrainian soldiers had to withdraw from Avdivka. We've all been to hell before, to put it mildly. But we've never been in one like this before. Perhaps only Mariupol was harder than Avdivka. Walking out. Lively, come on. Let's run across quickly. We walk out after 100 meters. Bro, who am I after? After me. I'm the first. I'm after Berlin? Yes. To the left side. Enemy tank. I don't want to catch a bullet. We were tasked with deterring the enemy. The task was quite specific, and we had not performed it before. It was to hold back the enemy's offensive to ensure the withdrawal of other Ukrainian units from Avdivka. That is, to create a corridor? Yes, it was our brigade that held one of Avdivka's flanks. Boys, let's start the game. Attention, move! Good luck, you guys. Gain distance. Let's go in the house. Plus. The White House, right? Right one, second. Go in, go in, faster. We lost our shit by the time we got there. It's crazy. Just don't shout. Catch your breath. Get ready. We were given a task, but everything was changing so fast in Avdivka, and we had to navigate and solve everything on the spot. That is, while we were getting from point A to point B, the task was already changing because the front line had shifted. Here's one house, torn down. And there you see in the distance, there's a metal balcony. Yes, I see. So you need to get to that house. Let's roll. Run, run. Next house. Salam, brothers. How many people came? Mine all. We worked in small groups. We cleared the houses, occupied them, and tried to build a line. That is, we wanted all our units, all groups, to be on the same line of defense. What's up? You need to shoot constantly. Uh, where are you shooting? So, do you see those two houses there? Yes. They are in that distant barn. Ronan, get up here. Shiva. Yes. I'm going to work with my GP too. Get back, get back.
Hal, Hal, that was us working. Now the orcs have opened fire. So you made them mad? Yes, yes. Detect your firing spots while keeping cautious yourselves. Detect enemy firing positions if possible. Who's that firing, Shiva or them? From there, right? Yes. I'm reading you. Guys, now do not waste ammo without urgent need. Do not waste ammo. So what? We get offended and go home? In my area of responsibility, two of my assault units and two units of another platoon were concentrated. There were about 30 to 40 of us in total. And the enemy attack on us was quite massive. 50 enemies must have stormed us. And this was only their first attack in the morning. And there could be from 6 to 10 such attacks per day. We took prisoners who told us that they could not go backwards because they were being shot from behind. They only went forward. Bro, here. I'll go bring them ammo. Roger that. Come on. And stay on the radio. a bad position. We can carousel work from there. Tell them to hold the right flank so that they don't bypass us. They won't pass here. Shiva, Shiva, what do you want? To run across to the boys? Hold on a second. I'll load the mag and cover you. Shiva, are you ready? Yes. Go. The enemy had quite large reserves concentrated there at that time. Very, very much manpower. Really very much. I've been at war since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, and I've seen a lot of different things. But I've never seen anything like this. The amount of enemy that just keeps pushing and pushing at you without stopping. Get back! Quick! Shiva, hold the sector. Won't get through here. Watch out, he's shooting at our corner. Bastard. Do not overheat the weapon. Where's the RPG? We'll show them. The problem with urban combat is that you can only hold a position as long as it exists. The position is mostly buildings. They are dilapidated or completely destroyed. 
If there are any intact buildings, the enemy quickly tries to dismantle them with artillery. So you either have to retreat or move forward. That is, it should be a dynamic defense. You can't stay in one place for a long time, because the enemy is mapping your buildings and begins to understand how your defense line is built. He begins to look for weaknesses, tries to carve out a corridor and break in and send his forces in there in mass. Covering. Who is in the rubble? Me. I'm here. I need another one. Guys, help me. Come on, come on, bro. Wait, hold this. I got it. Wait, I'm going to throw this out. Come on, get out, bro. Stretch out your leg. Hold this piece. I got it. I can't pull out my right leg. Pull out the left one first. It doesn't work. Get out, bro. That's great. Good job. How many times were you and your group surrounded? Every day we were almost surrounded. The enemy tried to take our positions and break through the front line in any way possible. And the enemy did not care how many of his men would die there. I think six or seven times for sure. Our positions were surrounded in a circle, but we managed to repel them. Go, go, go! Look, there's that door. Control it. Get down. Get down. Opa. It flew on. Did a drone fall? The BMPs with enemy troops arrived at our outpost. We kept our sectors at the windows, and we heard the vehicles. At first, the guys thought it was ours, because it was a shock to see vehicles so close. And then we saw an APC with guys on the roof. There were about a dozen people with red bandages on them. The enemy uses red and white bandages. We realized that they are not ours. I give the command to open fire. The guys just immediately reacted quickly, started to dismantle the infantry from above with machine guns, small arms, and started to practice with RPGs. What, you ready, bro? Yes. Show them hell. Yep. Yeah, of course. After this, BMPs, another one comes in. The same situation begins with it. It seems to me that the Russians did not even have time to realize what had happened. That is, an infantry fighting vehicle just arrives and their troops are mowed down from it. The vehicle is completely dismantled. In 15 minutes, three enemy BMPs with troops on top were destroyed. Later, when they started cutting off our logistics routes, we survived there thanks to those BMPs because they were packed with ammunition. Also, there was food, water, and the like in Russian backpacks. We took it all away, and thanks to that, we were able to keep our positions longer. Throw it right into the house. That's it. Clear. Shit.
shit. They're in shit. What's the situation? He says shit. Every day the enemy tried to invent something new. They tried to bring snipers to shoot at the positions where we have machine guns and grenade launchers. They tried using FPV drones to fly them into windows. They tried to dismantle buildings with grenade launchers. When they realized that they were not succeeding, they just went into meat assaults. They tried to do something at night, but it didn't work either, because our guys know how to work at night and cut out the enemy quite effectively. Guys, that was a drone. 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 Take shelter. Oh. Keep this delico. The orcs got mad. Is that coming at us? Yes. From where? Probably from inside the house. Was it flying at the roofs? Yes, yes. So they were shooting from that house. We need to take him down. Tell Berlin to let it work. Isaac, here? Tell Berlin to work. One more. One more. Same spot. Same spot. Tell him to try to throw it in the left half of the house. In the left window on the second floor. Damn. What? Control the sectors. Radio communication in Avdivka is very poor. The enemy jammed it intensively. It was often impossible to get in touch with the observation post, with the command, and on most days, we just acted autonomously. That is, we made our own decisions on how to act on the place. When the connection was restored, we reported to command what we had done, what we planned to do, and received certain adjustments from the command. It was very cool that we had our own medics on the ground, had ammunition and what we took from the enemy. This is what kept us going, the fact that the guys were using logic and thinking about what to do. Cossack, here. Look closely, they're coming. Everyone save ammo. They're provoking us with their shooting so that we shoot back. Studik. Studik. Well done. Good. Watch the ravine. There was a very large concentration of enemy manpower, for one thing. Secondly, they used a lot of equipment. They used aviation all the time. The aviation dropped CABs on us. Helicopters flew in and worked on our positions. They used mortars, artillery, cluster shells, and the enemy also had a large concentration of FPV drones. Avdivka basements are our new home. Look at the camera. Bastards. Shit. That's where it fell. <laughs> we are almost completely surrounded. And if we don't get out of Avdivka and this camera gets into the orc's hands, then know this, you bastards. You came to our land with the weapons. We will be biting until the last. We will destroy you to the last soldier. 
We will stand until our last meter. Do you get it? Burn in hell. It was just a matter of time. We had to hold our positions as long as possible so that the units leaving Avdivka could safely withdraw. And later, we had to try to roll back ourselves. In total, over the entire seven days, the forces of our outpost, my group together with the guys from the 2nd Company of our battalion, destroyed about two enemy companies and three armored vehicles. This is about 220 to 240 people. This is the enemy's KIAs. That's what we saw and counted when we went to collect their weapons, ammunition, documents, and so on. In other words, 40 people destroyed 240 enemy soldiers. And this was only in the area of responsibility of my group. In general, our brigade was stretched over a fairly long route. That is, you can realize how many enemies were destroyed. In general, we estimated that only during the week of our brigade stay in Avdivka, we killed about two to 3,000 enemies. And we know for sure that about three to 4,000 enemy personnel were wounded. Damn it. Work days. <laughs> I hope they replace us, at least tomorrow, <laughs> because I can't do it anymore. I need to sleep. Normally, not for two hours. Have you slept at all during these three days? Well, a little bit, dozed off a bit. We've held our ground until we received an order from the command to leave the lines and move to more favorable positions. In other words, we fulfilled our task. We arrived. Just tigers. Did their job and got out of there. We're alive. If you were interested in today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.